So now we'll look at case two for finding p-values on the chi-squared table. And this is the case where the test statistic we're looking for is on the left half of the table. Because of the way our table is structured, we're going to have to calculate one minus whatever number we see at the top of the table to get our actual p-value. And the reason is that to get, we want the area to the closest edge. And remember, the chi-squared table finds area to the right, but if we're on the left half, an area to the left would then be the complement. Example one, I'm given H1 where I've got sigma less than, because I have sigma, I know I'm using the chi-squared table. Less than tells me I have a left tail test which also tells me it's a one-tail test, so I will not be doubling my p-value, but I will have to do one minus whatever value I find at the top of the table. Since n equals 34 and we want degrees of freedom, we want row 33, but we're gonna have to use row 30 on the table. Our table doesn't have a row 33, and 30 is closer than 40 to the number 33. So I go to look for my test statistic in row 30, 18.493 is actually in the table, which is again rare, but I'll read straight up to get 0.95. Remember, p-values are always going to start at 0.5 or less before doubling, because otherwise you're in the middle of the table. So if it's got to start at 0.5 or less, then I know that I need to do one minus that top value, because I can't have a p-value of 0.95 before doubling. And so when I subtract, I get 0.05. My p-value equals exactly 0.05. Next example. Again, because I see the symbol, symbol sigma, I'm using the chi-squared table, not equal to means I have a two-tailed test, which means I will be doubling my p-value. I'll be going to row 13, and I'll look for my test statistic of 6.72. I'm going to see 5.892 and 7.042, but the number 6.72 is not in the table. It's in between the two values I just listed. So as I read up again, I see larger values, 0.95 and 0.90. My p-value is in between those values. But remember, I need the complement of those values, so 0.05 and 0.10. So it feels like my p-value would be between those, and I know that five cents is less than 10 cents, but don't forget, this was a two-tail test, so I actually need to double those numbers now. Do not double the 0.9 numbers. So now I can double those values to get that my p-value is from 0.10 to 0.20. Last example, chi-squared table. I see that I have a left tail test, so I will not double my p-value. Row 21, which is degrees of freedom, n minus 1, is listed in the table. And so as I start reading from left to right, I see 8.034, and then I see 8.897. But remember, I'm looking for 6.39. So the test statistic would be before the table actually started. It's off the edge of the table. Do you remember how to handle that? So as I look up at the numbers, Again, I see these 0.9 numbers which throw me off, so I might even want to start by taking the complement. 1 minus 0.95 is 0.005. 1 minus 0.99 is 0.01. So I can see the trend that as I read from right to left, the opposite of the normal way we read, that the numbers are getting smaller, so my p-value would be over there, something even smaller. My p-value is less than the smallest number I see, and we already mentioned that we're not going to double that. So my p-value is less than 0 0.05.